and welcome to the Klaus and Q Show here live on ONTV. We're coming to you from the ONTV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by Quadell Edwards. Q, I'm very fired up about this show. I mean, I know I say this every time we come on here, but we're kind of revisiting a topic here that I had talked about a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, but I felt like because that was a solo effort, and because I feel like that the, that this is a topic that can resonate with just about everybody that's tuning in here tonight and those who watch on demand exclusively on YouTube.com. Um, I felt like I this is something that you could add a lot to. And I'm very I'm very anxious to jump into this thing. But before we do, let's let's kind of play catch up. How's things in your neck of the woods as it were? You know what? I can't complain. How's everybody doing, first and foremost? Uh, you know, I'm I, my life is, and my, I always, you always have ups, ups and downs in your life, you know. So uh, for me, I'm enjoying life right now because you have to. Right. Even when you're in the downs, enjoy life. Listen, I saw a meme this morning, as, as a matter of fact, and like it's one of those things. And I don't, you know, me and memes, we have a complicated <laughs> Uh, re relationship because if I see something that that resonates that I can do a deep dive on I'm using that as as the basis for a podcast episode or something that we talk about here I'll bring it to the table what do you think about this um, but I, I saw something this morning that really put things in perspective for me at, at that at that particular point is no matter what happens no matter what you're going through no matter any of that there is always, always, always something in your life to be thankful for. And it doesn't, I mean, there, there is. You know, it seems like a lot of us, a lot of people are going through what they think is rock bottom. But while things may not be extraordinarily awesome at, in their lives at that particular point in time, there is always something to, to be thankful for. Because I don't care what the situation is, it could always be a, l a little bit worse, right? Absolutely, and it's, what a way to start. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, I always have a lot to say about gratitude, you know, uh, because there are people who did not wake up today, but had plans today, but you did wake up. So right. therefore, there's always something to be grateful for. You gotta keep on moving with gratitude. That's, that's I like that opener, man. I like that. <laughs> well, listen, we try to aim to please here <laughs> on, the, on, on the Klaus and Q show. Listen, um, we are going to talk about something here tonight that is a, a little bit you know, different in terms of how it's presented because anybody that tunes in regularly to our show here, we talk about the things that we can and probably should incorporate in our everyday life to to be the best version of ourselves, to be, well, to maximize our minutes, right? Because how many mm -hmm. times have you heard us say on here, on the podcast, wherever, we have one life to live. And we have to maximize our minutes while we're here. And you and I have come on here for the last several months and said, Listen, if you want to get to this point in life, if you want to achieve your goals, if you want to be happy, if you want to be the best version of yourselves, you should consider this, that, or the other. All right. We're going off script this week we're, because what we're going to talk about here tonight are five things to stop what you're doing right now. Because these, in my opinion, and I found this from, it was inspired by a meme, um, I kind of put my, my, my own seasoning in, into it, as it were. But five things that I feel like we can stop doing right now, and it's going to make either a big difference, a small difference, but, a, but whatever the case may be, a difference nonetheless yeah. to, to, to get you where you want to be. Now, I will set it up. Because full disclosure, this was, like I said, this was a topic that I covered by myself on the Klaus to the Heart podcast. Go back and watch it. And uh, it, <laughs> it, was, it was my personal take. But with the respect that I have for Q and the way he views the world and life as a whole, I really wanted to get his two cents on this. So I will set him up. You tell me what, what you think, and then we'll, we'll move down the list. Cool? Absolutely. All right. The first thing 
I feel like, and this is really in no particular order, this is how it was, it was pre you know, presented to me, is stop trying to please everyone else. You got to stop trying to please everyone else, Q, in my opinion. Yeah, and, I and, and my opinion is this, we, we have to stop trying to please everybody else because when we put that kind of time and effort into trying to please everybody else, the one person that's being neglected is the one person that you really should spend a tremendous amount of time on, and that's yourself. Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, that, <laughs> there are people that will uh, demand your attention, and if you're giving people attention and uh, becoming a people pleaser, it's easy to put yourself on the back burner, or even the ones that are close to you. You know, I, I have a big family. Uh, you know, I have a wife and five kids of my own, and there are times where there may be interference. There may, there's times where there may be uh, other people that you feel like you have to earn their respect or earn uh, their recognition and all of this other stuff, and you wanna, please them by doing this, that, all this other stuff. There's people being neglected that really demands your attention. So, you know, you always gotta take care of you. Therefore, you can take care of the ones close to you. And it's, it, that's why, I, and I know you're probably gonna lead to a, I don't wanna go too far <laughs> into it, but you know, people, everybody will not be pleased by what you do because Everybody have their own sense of pleasures. And you, you're not gonna be that adaptive to where you can uh, please everybody you come in contact with. You have to be who you are, and the people that are close to you will adapt to you. And those are the ones that will, you know, stick by your side. Those, those are the ones that are important, but everybody's not gonna accept you. Everybody's not gonna accept what you do. Everybody's not going to accept what you want to do. So if they're hindering you from being who you are supposed to be or being who you are meant to be, growing and growing and growing, because we always got to keep growing. Right. You might be done growing physically, but mentally, spiritually, keep growing. I mean, to your dying day, keep growing. Don't let nobody hinder you from doing that. Don't try to please everybody that you know you cannot please. You brought up a couple of things here. Um, the first thing that that really resonated with me, you you know, you said, you know, you're married, you got five kids. <laughs> Just that dynamic alone, All right. you know, it made it made my heart flutter because there is a particular family of five that I'm told is is, is tuning in right now as we're doing this, and that makes me very happy. <laughs> The, the other thing here that, that you mentioned was, um, and, I, and I touched on, on it too, you, yeah, you have responsibilities, you have obligations, you have people that are always demanding your time. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it could be your, 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 like your day-to-day -day activities or what have you. But it also it really rears its, uh, its ugly head when you come into a situation where you need help. You know what I mean? Like you, you can use a helping hand or, mm -hmm. or, or something along these lines. Usually it's by people that you have dropped everything for <laughs> when they needed something, but now that you need something, they're nowhere to be found. Right, right. You know, and it's like, how much time do you want to, to spend on people like that when you too have your own life to live? That's not to say screw off on, on your responsibilities right, or right. your obligations and things of this nature. That's not what we're saying at all. All we're saying is you've got to take that time and you've got to be allowed to have that time to invest in yourself because ultimately it's your life. Ultimately, and I don't care who you are, where you come from, anything like that, everybody has some sort of goals. Everybody right. has some sort of aspirations. Yep. Well, and you should. Yeah. you're not going to do that if you keep putting yourself on the back burner, like you said, yep. it's all, you know, a very perfect an analogy. Another one is this. Uh, when you find yourself, in, and this analogy was, was brought to me as I came into the studio here tonight by 
our good friend Joe, um, you know, when he, he likened it to like a hot air balloon, all right? And when you're in a hot air balloon and you're going one altitude, but you see like trees and power lines coming, uh -huh. you got to do something to avoid that imminent danger right, or right. that less than awesome a conclusion that is staring at you right in the face. So what do you, what do, you do? You got to cut some sandbags. And when you cut the sandbags, the dead weight, the balloon goes up and you yep. avoid catastrophe. And a lot of times that can be incorporated with this. Anything Absolutely. else you want to add to try and, you know, stop trying to please everyone else? I think that was well said. That was an awesome analogy, by the way. Uh, well, Joe's so, a pretty awesome guy. Yes, you know. he is. Yes, he is. Shout He's out in the to running Joe. for for the slogan guy, so you, so you better watch it. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, you know, dead weight is something that you got to do. Cut the fat, trim the fat. You know, uh, you want good meat, trim the fat. I mean, you uh, it's not can't. That complicated. Everybody can't go where you're going. Yep. <laughs> everybody can't. Everybody's not fit to be where you are you know so always find the ones that are you know for you people that tolerate people that uh that that, that celebrate you instead of tolerate you so it's always good to know who you dwell with right always know the crowd man because if you don't know your crowd you become that crowd <laughs> it's pretty well said right there um and that and that really kind of makes a smooth transition into the second part here, the s number two on the list, as it were, stop living in the past. You gotta stop living in the past because when you are so focused on everything that happened in the past, you are not allowing yourself the full potential and avenue to move forward. Right. Now that's not to say that you didn't encounter, you know, life altering s situations. I totally understand that. I mean, I'm not discounting the, the fact that you may have had to make some life al you know, altering you know, choices and, right, and, right. and decisions. And, and for some, it completely changed everything in their lives on every possible level. Mm -hmm. But you do that because, number one, something in the past and the present is not necessarily filling the wind in your sails. There is something that is voided. There is something that is missing. And it, you come to the understanding that you want more out, out of life, so what do you do? You're going to make a plan. You start to embark on this journey. Mm -hmm. You want to embark on the journey because you want a better result than what you're heading for now, right? I mean, that's kind of the bottom line of this thing, unless, unless there is some sort of other ulterior motive that I just do not fundamentally you know, understand. Right. Stop living in the past or you will never be able to move forward. I know you have comments on this. Absolutely. I'm, <laughs> quite a few. I'm gonna have to narrow this one down here. Uh, I, I want, I'll just start off with a question. And uh, for the audience, you know, for the, uh, you know. The but ones, you don't want me to answer? The ones watching, okay. I, I already know you have an answer. Okay. But, how many of you get into your car, drive down the road, and stare at the rearview mirror the entire time? <laughs> Can you imagine people doing that? Does it make sense? Absolutely not. What happens when you're driving down the road? You're not looking for it. You're looking at the rear view the entire time. You're going to go off the road. Or you're going to hit something. You're going to run into a tree. Yep. You might run somebody. You might hurt somebody else. All of these things can happen. There's going to be a collision. There will be a collision if you, and, and, that, and that's the same way in life. You're, you're looking in the past and you don't even know where you're going because you're looking in the past. You're not even focused on where you're supposed to go. So, I mean, people do that all the time. And I, I don't discredit past events a lot of things have affected us in the past but there will be a time where you have to continue to move forward we all had different things that happened in the past that we can you know dwell on but when you live in the past you're living on memories you're not living on 
the future. Right. Uh, so I always encourage people to just, you have to, it, it's, it may be hard. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you have to move past all of, all of the, the hiccups, all of the, the things that you used to be or the things that you used to do. You have to move past that. And another thing is, if you think of it this way, uh, some of us are still living on success that we had in the past. Yeah. The, yep. One of the biggest failures in life is your own success. Your own success. You begin to praise yourself. You begin to, <laughs> to say, I did this, I did that. You're telling people what you did 20 years ago because you haven't let it go and moved on and did something else. Right. You know, because that's great. You do something great in the past. That is to build you up to what you're going to do next. And a lot of people are not ready to do what's next because they're still celebrating the past. They're still back there. Uh, it's okay to reminisce, but you're not there anymore. Right. That's done and over with. Yesterday is gone. Last year is gone. 20 years ago, it's, it's, it's gone. So focus on where you are going because I, I never seen a photographer <laughs> with the camera taking a picture of a picture that he already taken. <laughs> How much sense does that make? <laughs> it's very, very good. It's very good. Stay focused. Move forward. Now, along those lines, now there will be people that are watching this, that are listening to the audio version of this, that they will hear that and, you know, they may have had to go through a very traumatic time in their life. Yes. Um, whether it be you know, a less than favorable uh, work environment, job, right, that, that right. Type of situation. Because I mean, we we've talked about it on here in many regards of you know how other people and other outside influences can have an impact on what we do, right, right. How we go about life. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get on the more personal end of that spectrum, and you go through a a traumatic relationship of some regard or a you know a bad breakup thing on that personal level right right, right. you know it's going to be harder for those individuals to not look at the past right. because that's it, a lot of those wounds are number one they're very deeply embedded yeah N number two you know, all, all depending on how long it went on for, mm -hmm. you're talking about longevity at this point. So there's going to be a lot of things that are swirling around your head, and it's going to take time to get that out. What, right. I, what I will say is this, though. It is real easy to fall in, into that trap because sometimes the harder of the two choices is to move on yes, and, and try to do something for yourself for the betterment of yourself for the betterment of if there's kids involved whatever the case may be right right sometimes the easy choice is not the right one the right one is going to be the harder one yeah. but if you truly if you are truly invested if you truly want this this change this better life for you for your kids whatever the case may be you're going to have to go through some crap, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go through the storms, as it were. I, I love that, uh, that uh, analogy because it paints a very vivid picture. But with every storm, there's a new clearing. There's a new horizon. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's a new sunrise on the end of that because they always say, you know, it's always darker right, right before the sun shines. Right. So Storms are temporary. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, yeah, things may suck, and it's real easy to keep rehashing, you know, everything that went wrong and allowing that to derail your momentum. This is the transition into n number three on this list. Stop overthinking everything. Now, I said this on the podcast, <laughs> and I realized how much of an oxymoron this may come off as because I have made no bones about the fact I am a very calculated individual. You cannot be calculated if you don't overthink. I understand that. But there is a fine line between overthinking in preparation mm -hmm. and overthinking in worst case scenario. And when you focus more on what could happen, 
that is of a negative tone that could, you know, maybe I won't achieve this. Maybe I won't get to my promised land. Maybe I won't be able to do this. Okay, well, why did that happen? Because a lot of people, Q, you know, man, they, they hit the first obstacle, the first roadblock, yep. and they're done. They can't do it anymore. Mm. Well, the hell with can't. Because you, how many times have you, heard, have you heard me say it? It's going to become a t-shirt. Can't either is you won't or you don't know how. Yep. And if you don't know how, there's other ways, people, organizations, something that will teach you mm -hmm. what not to do. Because obviously the course that you're on right now is not the right one. Because you keep getting knocked off or you keep, you're just not a happy individual. You are not the best version of yourself and that's what this whole thing is all about right 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 and that I like how that that mixes with the last one with the uh, living in the past uh, you mentioned wounds earlier and a wound is a sign of healing a wound is a sign of healing when you got that deep cut what does it turn into it, it turns into a wound so you might have scars along the way <laughs> it's just okay to have scars because those are nothing but battle scars but uh uh, sometimes we, there's a difference between overthinking and actually being smart. <laughs> well, you know, uh, some, some, some people are very, just like you say, they prepare. They know how to prepare things and uh, get things in order without having those distractions of the past sometimes. We, sometimes that past becomes a distraction because we can't move forward because we're looking the wrong way. Right. So uh, we, we start to overthink because we might look at those past failures. We might look at those past uh, times we, we, we fell on our face, you know. It's, I always say, you know, if you fall, fall backwards so you can see up and get, get up. Right. <laughs> Make sure you- Take the you, back bump, pal. Yeah, take the back bump. <laughs> 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 Don't fall on your face. Don't allow yourself to fall on your face. When you fall on your face, you pretty much might quit, you know, right. so. But those, those scars, those, 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 deep cuts that you're going to experience, don't give up because they're going to turn into scars. They're going to turn into closed wounds. And uh, those scars, that's a sign of healing. You're going to be, you're going to get over each and every situation if you allow yourself to. Not only, uh, you know, as a scar, but it's, it's a reminder yeah. of what you went through yep. to, to get to where you want to be. Now, a lot of us have aspects in our past, in our history, that we are not necessarily very fond of, that you know may be perceived as good or whatever. But it does not matter because it's, it's merely a part of your individual story. Mm -hmm. Did you come with an, with an owner's manual when you were born? Because I sure <laughs> as hell didn't, and I don't believe anybody else did either. So we're all going through this. We're, we're all learning this as we go along. So yeah, we've made mistakes. Yeah, we did things that we probably knew at the time were probably less than ideal, but we did them anyway. We threw caution to the wind. We said, what if? Well, that's great and everything. But now it's, what if I do this to get to where I want to be? Mm -hmm. Instead of, what didn't work? Instead of, this is what could happen that would result in failure. And I totally understand that. I understand that on a few different levels. I overthink to a fault. I do. But I also realize I do when I'm doing it, and then mm -hmm. I stop, right? Or I, at least I try to. Because as I read this list initially, Q, I was like, this is me. Mm -hmm. I'm an overthinker because I'm calculated. I like to be prepared for what could possibly go wrong right but along those lines i also prepare for how i would react how things if things go right because with every success that with every amount of success that i have had with every goal that i have ever achieved whether it be doing the podcast the show here when i was running the Michigan Wrestling Organization, and we, and we booked a, a pretty high-profile venue, or we did something just absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, in, internally, man, I was doing cartwheels and backflips. <laughs> I was, you know, I was happy. I was, I was fulfilled. But you would never know that. 
on the outside because I did not want to be perceived as somebody that was, you know, gloating or hanging or resting on my laurels. Right. You know, how how many years ago did was did we book the Birch Run Expo Center? It's not it's not even that it's not even called that anymore. <laughs> it's like Camping World or something like that. But that was a big venue for us. It was a huge venue for us. And we did it back to back years. And I could have shouted to the heavens, "Hey, look what we did." Mhm. Mm but I don't need their justification. I, I got the justification from the looks and the reaction from the roster that performed that show and for the fans that came to support it. Yep. That was my justification. But I overthought that process in case things go wrong. But I also thought about how things would go right. And I know, and I know it's kind of worded funny, maybe you have a better way of, of wording that, but I, I, I truly believe, man, like there is that fine line be between being prepared, mm -hmm. calculated, but not letting the overthinking thing just totally dictate what you're doing. Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. And uh, I can attest to this one because we're having a moment of transparency right now. Uh, I'm an overthinker. <laughs> so I'm an overthinker. And uh, shout out to Brian Both. We actually had a conversation about. Love that guy. About overthinking. <laughs> he's, he's, I, was, I was naming all of this stuff that I wanted to do, and I was giving him timelines and all this stuff. He's like, man, you're, you're overthinking. You're overthinking it. Sometimes you just got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You're right. It's a you're very right. good point. Yeah, and, and, if, and because of those words, I actually started doing some other stuff and actually getting some stuff done, and I appreciate that. Um, and that's that's one thing about overthinking. It is very uh, time-consuming because mm -hmm. you're going to miss key times, time that you're not going to get back, right. time that you're not going to – time is very precious, and I believe I said it before, it's more precious than money. Time is more precious. You, you get money back. Time <laughs> you don't get back. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Well, I'm not going to be 20 tomorrow. Right. So you don't. You don't get that time back. So uh, it's it, it's it's very key that you uh, prepare. It is important to prepare. Always prepare for the worst, but expect the best. Expect the best. I prepare for. Any time that I believe that I might not get past this obstacle, I might not get the success that I'm looking for. So I'm prepared for it. Therefore, I know how to get to that plan B. I know how to get to that next step because people usually don't prepare for the worst. So when the worst happens, they quit. Yep, they're caught off guard. <laughs> yep, they're like, okay, I don't have, I don't have a backup for this. I don't know what to do. Then you start overthinking because you didn't have a plan in place. There's Overthinking kind of sets in in different ways, you know, so you can fail and start overthinking or you can overthink before you even start. Right. Which causes you not to start because you might miss key times. You might miss a deadline for something, you know, uh, and, and, and it's very it's very uh, time sensitive. If I think like when we first started the show, I could have been that overthinker and missed the uh, debut show. <laughs> because I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm, I don't know what I'm going to say because sometimes we overthink ourselves into fear. Right. And, we and, psych ourselves out. Yeah, and then, yeah. You, then you check out. You psych yourself out and then you check out. So it's very, very time sensitive. Do you think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. Absolutely makes perfect sense. And I think that's a good way to um, wrap up the first half of this list here. Well, not really half because we're only dealing with five of them. But um, the, the next two are going to require a little bit more time. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to run a quick timeout. And we will be back with the last two segments of this particular list. The five things to stop doing right now. We'll be back with more of, of the Klaus and Q show right after this. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. 
For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And then I said, oh, we're back on the air. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Welcome back to the... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show. We're live here on ONTV, as live. you can tell. <laughs> it can't go wrong if it's live, right? So uh, we've, we've been talking about the five things we need to stop doing right now, in all seriousness, in order to get to, or to help us as we embark on our journeys to get to the best version of ourselves, which has been the reoccurring theme for our show here. Now, we talked about three already. We talked about stop trying to please everyone. We stopped, we, we talked about stop living in the past and stop overthinking. Now, these next two, one, one of which you and I have talked about a couple of times here on the Klaus and Q show. Um, and, and the last one here is one, like when I, anybody that listens to the podcast knows that it's a completely different um, presentation because I realize it is audio only, and by and large, my audience is of adult you know, age group, and like I adjust my language accordingly. <laughs> um, but be that as it may, this, this last one here is, is one that really resonates, and any time that I talk about it, any time I think about it, I tend to get a little bit fired up. So full disclosure, I could go into <laughs> promo mode by the time we go off the air here. But before we get there, Q, we, we've talked about this a couple of times. Um, stop fearing change, right? Oh, because we, we, we talk about how change is one of those things. I mean, we're going to have to go through it if we're ever going to improve our situation right. or improve what, what we're trying to do or where we want to go in life. Like, there's a reason why we're not there. Yes. It is because we are continuing on that same journey, the same road. You're dealing with the same scenarios, with the same people, the same circumstance. Nothing is different. And if nothing is different, nothing is going to change. It's not that complicated, right? Right, right. It's easier said than done. And I realize that. I totally realize that because you could be dealing with, with something that in your mind, it is, it, it, it is earth shattering. You know, it is, has the effect or the ability to affect every aspect of your life. So anytime you even think about trying to embark on changes, either minor or radical, to get to a better port or, or a, a better point in your life, that does, you know, that does bring out a lot of fear in you because we don't want to fail. We don't want to fail for a number of reasons. And the, the whole aspect of change, you know, a lot of us, we, we automatically go to the negative side of the spectrum. You know, in, in the quick sidebar cue, and, I, and it just dawned on me, is every time we talk about something, like, it comes down, I talk about like a spectrum or the coin or whatever. So much of our life is either on the positive side of the spectrum or the negative side of the spectrum. Not a lot of times is there a whole lot of gray area in there. Right. And I don't know why that just popped in my head, <laughs> but it did as I was laying this out. Because, yes, I mean, you can fear change in, in, in the hopes that you will avoid failure. But if you fear change enough, and then if you kind of look, instead of looking at what could go wrong, you're really holding yourself back from what could go right and what could go right is that magical door that leads you to your promised land. Would you agree or no? Absolutely. Uh, I've got quite a bit to say about change. Uh, <laughs> for one, we change, all do. 
Change <laughs> is inevitable. It's going to happen. But it's up to you if, you if it's the good change or the bad change because life is about change. Growth is about change. You can't grow without changing. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of growth. So if you want to stay the same, then that's actually still a change, but in a negative way because there's going to be things that's going to impact you that you're not going to be able to handle because you didn't grow. Right. So uh, yeah, think about it. We, 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 do you drink formula? <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about these things like change. No, I don't. I don't drink formula. I don't. I'm not on the bottle anymore. <laughs> a change had to happen. So when you grow, you you start eating meat. <laughs> you start eating meat. I mean, a change happens, but you have to al allow it to happen. Uh, one, one <laughs> the fear of change. I'm sorry. <laughs> Very unprofessional. People are stuck in tradition. People are stuck in tradition because it's comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone. And for and I'll, I know for me, I'll use myself as an example. I d did not consider myself a talker. I did not consider myself somebody that speak in front of loud, uh, uh, large crowds. No, I didn't see myself doing that. I mean, I'm doing it at church now. I'm doing it here on the, uh, on the show. And I'm speaking to a lot of people with, uh, you know, my, my, my training, my workout training and everything. So uh, there is a change that had to happen, you know, even, you know, mentally. You got to grow mentally to be able to, to handle that change. But it's a risk because you don't know, you don't really know how it's going to turn out. And that's, that's the fear that people have and they don't want to do it. But life is about risk. I mean, you got to take the risk. I mean, look at, uh, look at, look at, look at some of the, the people, uh, some of the, look at, like, look at Bill Gates. I mean, <laughs> there was a change that happened, and he used to work for the company that he bought out. Right. So, I mean, you, there, there, there's a change that had to happen, and it was a risk that he had to take. And just Steve Jobs, all of these guys, there was a risk that they had to take. That's part of the change. I mean, don't think that the change is going to be oopsie-daisy and it's going to be ac accidentally oops up on you and you're going to be, it's going to be all easy. And No, it's not going to be easy. Change is never easy. But it, it it's supposed to hurt. That's like pressure. And I think about, I think about my fitness training. Now, there was a change that had to happen to me. If I take this arm and I start curling for 25 weeks, and th that muscle begins to change, but there's a lot of pressure. Right. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure. I gotta be able to lift that weight. And as the change happens, I begin to lift heavier weight. There's a change that happens that you are able to lift the weight of life because you're gonna have weights of life that you're gonna have to deal with. Different things that we have to deal with, but you have to be able to change allow change to happen in a good way allow it to happen you agree with me absolutely yes <laughs> absolutely look I, who are you talking to right now <laughs> like right now you put change in google and my face pops up next to it <laughs> i mean not really but you you get the point everybody's at home googling right now i know <laughs> you're welcome for that um no you're absolutely right and that um that's going to lead us to in my opinion, and this, this is just my opinion, of the five things that we've talked about here tonight, this is the one that resonates with me more than anything. Personally, professionally, more personally, obviously, for me, myself, but also, you know, to those that really mean the most to me, the ones that are like the center of my world. And like, when I see things like this happening with, you know, with friends, with, you know, people that we care about. But when it's somebody that, you know, you, you just, they're at the center of, of your world and you see this type of thing happening, um, it really, it really triggers a lot of emotions in me. And some of them, most of them in, in, in this realm are less than awesome because I did this to myself all the time. So in my opinion, and the fifth, the fifth element here, of this list is stop talking down about yourself because what happens when you talk down 
about yourself in front of other people to other, to other people, you, what you're doing is you are training them, you are teaching them what you deem acceptable as to how you are talked to and how you are treated. And if you don't show yourself any respect and you talk crap about yourself, you are subsequently telling these people that it's okay for them to talk to you that way, for them to treat you like you don't matter, mm -hmm. for you to be the, the, the mat on which they walk. Screw that. <laughs> PG because ah. <laughs> I sit here, I think about it, Q. I, because I, I did this for so long yeah. with myself. Because a lot of people do it, and I realize why they do it. They do it because they want to compensate for something that they feel is a shortcoming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, when when people feel bad about themselves in one way or the or the other, it could be physically, it could be their presentation, it could be what they think or what. You know, they may have been called a nerd all their lives because, you know, they like comic books. Who right. gives a crap? Right. Comic books may be their thing. You know, just because I don't know every single character doesn't mean I think that this individual is a nerd or they're less than because they happen to know every single character in a comic book. That's their passion. That's great. Leave them alone. Right? Yeah. I, it, it bugs the crap out of me because I went through, as a wrestling fan, I went through this. I was the wrestling nerd. Uh, I turned that into a, to a career. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, my, my point here is, and I'm very passionate about this, because with somebody that what I had was a shortcoming in terms of my speech presentation, you know, I have a speech impediment. Some of you have picked up on it, on it today. I've gotten hung up a couple times. Um, but a lot of, and this is not the case with me because this is one thing I would never joke about, but anybody else who has any kind of what they would deem to be a shortcoming, the way they combat that so that they feel like they're still being accepted on some BS level because anything other than who they truly are on the inside, they will poke fun at it. They right. will use humor as as like a defense mechanism to hide the pain that it is causing them. So they do that as a defense mechanism. They will talk smack about themselves mm -hmm. before anybody else has the opportunity to do so. But again, it comes back down to you're telling them that it's okay to talk to you with anything, with, with anything other than respect and dignity. And I have a huge, huge problem with this. I am going to take a time out. I'm going to let you talk because I feel a promo coming on. So you go yeah, ahead and take this. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, this is a big one here. Uh, I know for me, I can relate to that, you know, because I'm a wrestling fan too. I was called a wrestling geek, uh, wrestling nerd or whatever you want to call it. And also, you know, even being uh, a born again Christian, you know, I, I was called a Jesus freak, you know. so. No matter what category, yeah, there's people going to talk about you. Uh, one thing you can't do is talk about yourself. You cannot down yourself because people are already doing that, trying to down you. So, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm in a point of my life where, okay, they, you can call me a Jesus freak or, you know, the, the Christian boy or the good boy or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but I'm like, oh, well. They talked about Jesus in the Bible. <laughs> they talked about him, and they killed him. Right. So who am I? You know. So uh, at this point, I'm, words, words are very powerful. So you got to be careful. You really got to be careful how you talk to yourself. You really have to be careful how you talk to yourself. There is an equation um, that it le kind of leads to. So uh, it, it it it's. It's going to lead to poor self-esteem. You're going to have poor self-esteem. You're going to down yourself. And then when you do one good thing, it's going to lead to pride. And then you're going to be like, well, I did this. I did that. Now you don't have gratitude. for, for <laughs> You don't have gratitude because all of a sudden you did everything. So, I mean, it, it's so much can happen just from you talking down to yourself. We got depression. Depression is at an all-time high right now. Mm -hmm. Is at an all-time high. 
People are dealing with it different ways. And right here in America alone, I mean, the percentage is over 50%. And it's sad because it usually comes from talking down to yourself because you start to worry about what other people think about you. You start to worry about, and then you start to agree with them. Right. And then you're, you're in the mirror saying, I can't do this, I can't do that. Um, I'm a loser, I'm a Jesus freak, I'm a wrestling freak, I'm a Democrat freak. It's all kind of stuff. I mean, don't fall into that trap. It's, it, to me, it's just a trap to get you to just stay in a bubble that you just can, you just want to explode in. The best way to be you is to just cut the chatter. There's so much chatter. There's always going to be chatter around you. It's up to you to allow it in. You know, so, and, and, and that is crazy because this relates, this one relates to all five, uh, all the, the other four. You can't have people in your life talking crap about you. You can't have people in your life saying that, you know, you're, you're, you're a loser or you can't do this. You're, I, don't like, I don't like the way your beard looks. I, it, people are going to talk. People are going to talk, but it's up to you to allow that to really resonate in your head. Don't let it marinate in there. Don't let all that negative talk just bring you to a point where you can't do nothing. You don't even want to get out of bed. I know people that mm. don't even want to get out of bed because of words. The, the, that, that, that saying, sticks and stones, break my bones, but words that never hurt me, that is a lie. That is a lie. Words hurt mo words can kill people are out here committing suicide over what other people are saying some people are committing suicide by what they are saying to themselves words are very powerful the tongue that tongue i'm telling you it's almost like uh what is it, the submarine you know if you if you look at the submarine and the way you steer that submarine there's a little bitty uh I don't even know the name of it. So I call it a flipper. Yeah, yeah, the little bitty flipper yeah, yeah. <laughs> that directs it left and right. That's how your tongue is. Your tongue will lead you to destruction. It will lead you to destruction if you allow it. Here I am going. Is this promo mode for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to sit here and just let you go. I was like. <laughs> because I, I'm guilty of it. You know, I've done it. I've talked bad about myself. I, you got to grow from that. That's one of the other ones uh, where you got to allow yourself to change. You mm -hmm. got to allow yourself to change. You got to allow yourself to grow from all that talking bad about yourself and allowing other people to talk bad about you because people are going to talk. Let them talk. You are the one that's responsible for taking it in. So... I'm, no, hey, it's, it's, I, it's, I your promo, it. it's your promo time now. Take, take me in, brother. <laughs> take me in. Um, yeah, I, I do have more to add to that. But before I do, because I don't know how far in the weeds I'm going to go with this, you know how scary this could be. I want to mention real quick, we're going to be back here on ON TV on July the 15th, live at 6 p.m. And then the one that everyone's been asking us about since last month, when is the live studio audience show? August the 12th, fr Friday night, August 12th, beginning at 6 p.m. And if weather permits, we're actually going to move the set and everything to to the outdoor area, and we will be doing this live outdoors. So if you are in the Lake Orion area on August 12th and want to be a part of the Klaus and Q show, this is your opportunity. Now, in, in the event of, of inclement weather, and we are not able to do it outside, well, we just move it right back in here into the studio, and we will still have a studio audience participation Q&A session at the end of the show. If you are a fan of the show and you want to come hang out with Q and I for about an hour, um, we promise you, you will not regret spending your part of your weekend with us. Again, that's Friday night, August the 12th. All right. Free uh, autographs for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's not get crazy about it. <laughs> Free autographs. Look at this guy. Now, I mentioned when I introduced this particular segment, this one resonates, this one hits home. You, you touched on a lot of great points. And I, like as I was sitting here watching you talk, like I, 
I saw like this fire in you that I hadn't seen yet. And it was a different, it was a different passion. It was a different, that, that, that rant came from a different part of you that you have not, you had not tapped into yet. So that was kind of cool to sit back here and watch. Um, now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I talked shit about myself for a long time and it got me absolutely nowhere. In fact, it put me so far behind the eight ball that I often utilize that word can't. We all know how I feel about this. We also know how I feel about the fact that we have to be our greatest cheerleader. I am so sick to death of all of these make-believe entities that dictate what is acceptable, what is cool, what is beautiful. I don't buy into it at all because those people that are pushing that garbage down your throat are manufactured. They're not real. The, the facial features and all that, that's not what they look like at four in the morning when they're first waking up. It's not. It's not real. What is real is what's on your inside. It gets no more real than that, as long as you're honest with yourself. Now, for the longest time, each, a lot of us go through our lives wanting to be accepted. We want to be you know, held in some sort of higher regard than we feel like that we already are because we are often influenced by, well, BS guidelines from BS organizations and entities. Again, they're not real. What is real is that you have to be your greatest cheerleader. And somewhere along the line, somebody told you that you weren't good enough. I call BS. I call BS on that for a number of different reasons, a lot of which I've discussed here in previous, in previous episodes. But it comes down to, yes, you are good enough. Because there's not another individual that walks this earth that is you. Not one. I don't care if you're a twin, triplet, sextuplet, what I, however many kids can be born at one particular time, it doesn't matter because there's something different in each and every one of them. There's something different in each and every one of you. And instead of listening to all of the crap about why you are not good enough, you need to focus on the words and the people that are your cheerleaders. They are the ones who see who you truly are and who you truly want to be. And they want to see you at your ultimate happiness. That does not happen if you keep talking down to yourself because you're not your biggest cheerleader. And there are going to be those waning hours, those waning moments where there is nobody else around in that particular time. You have to tap into your own self-reserve. And you can. And you will. So if you ever need a reminder that you are good enough, go back, flag this episode. Go to this particular point in time. And if you don't want to, if you can't watch it, listen to this. You are good enough. You are awesome. And it's a damn shame that not enough people told you that. But I will. Because on your worst day, there is, again, something to be thankful for. On your worst day, there is something that you bring to the proverbial table that no one else is capable of doing. You do that. There's someone very special in my life, like has my whole heart, literally in the palm of her hand. I cringe every time she says something that is disparaging against herself. Because in my mind, she walks on water. Now, I don't, I'm not in her head. You're not in your wife's head, nor are they in ours. So when we go through these moments where we feel less than awesome, it's real easy to sit there and buy into that BS of why you can't or why you're not. But you are. And you need to be reminded of that. Anything else you want to add to this? As we put a bow on this week's episode? I think that was well said. Uh, I just... 
I, I just, you know, to everyone that's watching, just, just stay encouraged and just get all the chatter out, get all the people that's not benefiting you out. Uh, sometimes you just, I'm not saying isolate yourself, but surround yourself with the right people because relationships are important. So, right. but you know, it's, it's gotta be the right relationships. You gotta be the right people. Everybody is not for you. Everybody is not there to see you succeed. Some people are waiting for you to fall. Yep. They're waiting in the wings. And when, when you fall, they go on about their business right. and go watch somebody else fall. So, I mean, there, you have to know that, you know, so, um, uh, motivate, stay motivated and go motivate somebody else, pay it forward, uh, encourage somebody else. And just like I was talking about those words, negative words, bring people down, bring yourself down, wake up in the morning and say something good about yourself every day. You know what I started doing a long time ago is I, I, I would tell myself, I'm the smartest guy I know. <laughs> and, begin, and, and at that time, I start to do more studying on things. I start to learn more. And I start saying good things and positive things about myself. And it's not that I'm being prideful because I know others are helping me in that area. But, you know, it's, 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 you have to speak to yourself sometime and just encourage yourself. Say, hey, get up. I'm going to move on. I'm going to be happy. I'm, I tell myself, I say, I'm going to be happy today. Right. I don't care what's going on. I say, I am going to be happy today. I'm on my way to work. I say, I'm going to have a good day at work. You have to be able to talk to yourself. It's, that don't make you crazy. Mm -mm. Talk to yourself. Encourage yourself because everybody is not going to be there to do that. You know, there's going to be times you're, you're, you're alone. You got you to gotta get yourself up and going. So, you know, do that with yourself. Do that with others. Encourage somebody, encourage the people that are close to you and, and, and get the weeds out, get the weeds out. Very well said, my friend. And uh, for all the latest in information on our show, our upcoming schedule and more information on our live studio audience show, you can follow us over on Facebook. Just look for the Klaus and Q show or Klaus to the heart dot net, which is, has all of our information on there as well. Q, I appreciate you as always. Joe and everybody else here at uh, ONTV Studio, we thank you for allowing this to be a thing. And thank all of you for inviting us into your homes or your, your electronic phones and gimmicks and things of this nature. <laughs> but we appreciate you spending time with us here. And we, we will be back on July the 15th at 6 p.m. Until then, he's Quadel Edwards. I'm Jason Klaus. Be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you. Next month, right here on the Klaus and Q Show, exclusively on Orion Neighborhood Television. Love you guys.